Marker. In a town known for its sparkle and shine, where bright lights highlight the famous, there's a darker side too. Famous stars and new talents alike can fall victim to the harmful effects of alcohol. But we're not just here to gossip. We want to talk about how addiction can affect people and show the ups and downs of these stars. Here are the 10 worst cases of alcoholism in Hollywood history. Number 10, Oliver Reed. Oliver Reed was an actor who really grabbed your attention. He was famous for playing bad guys and had a strong look with bright blue eyes and scars on his face from a bar fight. His acting skills were amazing, but they were often overshadowed by his problems with drinking. Directors like Ridley Scott and others recognized his talent. Oliver Reed starred in over 120 films, including The Three Musketeers, Oliver Twist, Treasure Island, and Gladiator. Sadly, he died after finishing his work on Gladiator due to a drinking game with some sailors at a bar in Malta. Ridley Scott, the director of Gladiator, specifically chose Oliver Reed for the role of Proximo, but he asked that Reed not drink during the shooting of the film. However, according to Reed's good friend, Sir Christopher Lee, Reed would become a different person after he had eight drinks, and it was upsetting to see. When Oliver Reed was 35 years old, he got into a fight at a club with some guys. After he made a snide comment and walked away, they followed him into the bathroom and attacked him with broken bottles. Reed needed 63 stitches for the deep cuts on his face, which left him with permanent scars. He thought this would end his movie career. In the end, Oliver Reed died doing what he loved most, being the life of the party. His story is a tragic reminder of the effects of alcoholism. Before finishing his last movie, Gladiator, Reed went to a pub one night. He drank eight bottles of beer, three bottles of rum, and several shots of whiskey. Sadly, he had a heart attack and passed away soon after. Looking back at his life, Reed often said he wished he had drunk every pub dry and slept with every woman in the world. Barbara Payton. In the early 1950s, Barbara Payton was a promising B-list actress. She knew famous men like Bobo and her husband, Francho Tone. But her career went downhill and she started drinking heavily. This led to her losing her good looks, her career, and several run-ins with the law for being drunk in public, writing bad checks, and prostitution. Born in a small town in Minnesota, this beautiful blonde moved to Hollywood and quickly became one of the biggest stars of the 1940s and 1950s. She acted alongside famous actors like James Cagney, Gary Cooper, and Gregory Peck, but Peyton's personal life was a mess. She had many affairs, violent relationships, shoplifted, worked as a prostitute, and had many problems with the police. In the 1960s, her alcoholism got worse, but it seemed to give her some stability in her difficult life. Peyton's life got even worse after she lost custody of her son because of her reckless lifestyle. For example, in 1962, she was charged with public drunkenness when she was found sleeping at a bus stop on Sunset Boulevard, wearing a coat and a bathing suit. That same year, she was arrested for being disorderly while drunk at a wild afternoon party. After that, she spent many nights in bars and pubs. Sadly, at just 39 years old, she was found dead from heart and liver disease. She looked so different that it was hard to recognize her. Richard Burton. Richard Burton was a famous actor known for his powerful acting style, deep voice, and his relationship with Elizabeth Taylor. Many people thought he was as good as the famous Laurence Olivier, even now. His great performances, like his Oscar-nominated role in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, are remembered. But, as they say, old habits die hard. Burton started drinking when he was just 12 years old. During his worst times, he would drink three bottles of vodka a day, his heavy drinking became a problem during the filming of The Klansman. He had trouble standing up straight and often had to do scenes sitting or lying down. Off the set, his behavior was just as reckless. After hearing about a reported shark sighting, he bravely drank 21 shots of tequila before diving into the ocean. In 1974, Burton's life was in danger after he drank too much hard alcohol. A few years earlier, in 1970, Doctors had warned him that his heavy drinking would eventually kill him. 
his bad habit caused his kidneys to grow bigger than normal. Later, during surgery in the early 1980s, doctors found that his spine was covered with hardened alcohol. Even after doctors warned him, this amazing actor from Wales ignored their advice. Sadly, his successful career ended suddenly in 1984. He died from the effects of alcoholism at the age of 58. Number 7. John Barrymore This actor, who was part of the famous Barrymore family of actors, was a big deal in the early 1900s. He was considered one of the greatest actors of his time. Interestingly, Barrymore was known for playing characters with alcohol problems in movies, even though he had a drinking problem himself. He was most famous for his amazing performances in Shakespearean roles and for playing Mr. Hyde in Sherlock Holmes, but his difficult childhood and later life problems made his drinking issue worse. There was even a time when his second wife found him trying to drink her perfume. In 1933, he acted in a successful comedy film called Dinner at Eight, directed by George Cukor. In this film, he played one of his first roles as a drunk, portraying a boozy actor. Sadly, in the following years, his career took a hit because of his battle with alcohol and how it affected his memory. Starting in 1936, he had to use cue cards to remember his lines. This was the start of his career going downhill. Some of his roles told the story of a man who falls into a life of heavy drinking and wild living, and his hands were always shaking. In 1942, when he was 60 years old, he was dealing with cirrhosis, kidney disease, and chronic swelling. He finally broke down and died soon after. There's a story that after Barrymore died, some of his drinking friends, including Humphrey Bogart, John Huston, and David Niven, decided to play a creepy joke. They supposedly took Barrymore's dead body and moved it to the house of their friend, Errol Flynn. They put the body in a chair with a drink in its hand, facing the entrance. When Flynn came home and turned on the lights, he was scared to see his dead friend staring at him. Shocked, Flynn ran out of the house and into the backyard, screaming like a scared child. His friends found him and led him back inside, where they all sat around the body and had a few drinks. They returned the body before dawn. To pull off such a weird joke, you'd need a group of people with serious drinking problems. This group was well known for drinking a lot. We don't know if the story is true, but it's definitely interesting. Errol Flynn. Errol Flynn, widely regarded as the epitome of charm and masculinity, made a lasting impression as the legendary swashbuckler in films like Robin Hood and Captain Blood. However, behind the glitz of the silver screen, his life was a tumultuous whirlwind of debauchery, darkness, and relentless adventure. This notorious ladies' man reveled in his image as a seductive rogue, a fierce fighter, a cocaine enthusiast, and an ardent lover of alcohol. Flynn was known for his wild lifestyle, even sharing drinks with Fidel Castro in Cuba. His bachelor pad in Malibu, shared with fellow actor David Niven, earned the infamous nickname Cirrhosis by the Sea due to the enormous amount of alcohol consumed within its walls. On his private boat, he hosted raucous parties filled with sex, booze, and cocaine. His dedication to excess was so extreme that he would sometimes stumble onto film sets in a drunken haze. In his early 30s, Flynn suffered a harrowing collapse in an elevator. Doctors delivered grim news. His heart and lungs had sustained irreparable damage. Astonishingly, this revelation did little to curb his relentless pursuit of indulgence. Tragically, his excessive lifestyle claimed his life at the age of 50 when he succumbed to a fatal heart attack. By the time of his death, his once dashing figure had been replaced by a bloated, overweight frame, ravaged by cirrhosis. Jan Michael Vincent Jan Michael Vincent was a renowned Hollywood figure celebrated for his striking looks and his role in the popular TV series, Airwolf. Despite his immense potential and physical attractiveness, his life ended tragically, ravaged by excessive alcohol and drug use. His repeated drunk driving convictions, involvement in severe car accidents leading to injuries including a broken back and loss of a leg, domestic violence cases, and premature aging due to substance abuse, all painted a grim picture of his precipitous downfall. 
Once compared to the likes of Brad Pitt during the 70s and 80s, Vincent's charming appearance and sculpted physique left a lasting impression on audiences across America. His career was launched almost like a fairy tale when he caught the eye of a film scout while serving in the California Army National Guard. This led to his swift rise to fame, starring alongside renowned actors like Robert Conrad, Rock Hudson, Charles Bronson, John Wayne, Burt Reynolds, and Robert Mitchum in major motion pictures. Unfortunately, Vincent didn't experience the usual struggles aspiring actors face, which led to a sense of entitlement and difficulty handling the swift success that came his way. He reached the financial peak of his career when he earned a record-breaking salary for his role on Airwolf, becoming the highest paid actor in television history at that time. However, this vast wealth further facilitated his destructive habits, including cocaine and alcohol abuse. During the second and third seasons of Airwolf, his addictions became increasingly apparent, causing production delays, budget overruns, and eventually leading to the show's premature cancellation. Vincent's downfall continued, transforming him from an A-list Hollywood star to an unemployable actor in B-list films. In 1996, he was involved in a near-fatal car accident, which broke his neck and exposed his extreme intoxication at the time. Ultimately, his addiction led to his demise. He passed away in 2019 at the age of 74 from a heart attack, marking the end of a career once filled with promise, but ultimately ruined by personal issues and self-destructive behavior. Number 4. Humphrey Bogart Humphrey Bogart, hailed as one of the greatest male actors in the history of American cinema, earned numerous Academy Award nominations and delivered memorable performances in timeless classics such as Casablanca, The Maltese Falcon, Treasure of the Sierra Madre, The African Queen, and many others. These roles earned him immense respect among Hollywood's elite. However, Bogart was also known for his heavy drinking. According to one of his friends, Bogart is a really nice guy until around 11.30 p.m. After that, he transforms into a version of himself he believes is Bogart. When under the influence, he could become angry, stubborn, or even abusive. As his illustrious career progressed, his drinking started to impact his work. He often arrived on set either intoxicated or hungover. In one instance, he showed up in his pajamas, refusing to work, and instead opted to ride a bicycle around the Warner Brothers studio. While filming the adventure film Sahara, he reportedly refused to leave his dressing room until his then-wife, Mayo Methot, delivered a thermos filled with martinis. Bogart's drinking led to several incidents, including one where he drunkenly left a restaurant with their safe, abandoned it, on Beverly Hills Boulevard, and another where he assaulted a few women who attempted to take away the toy panda he had brought to an exclusive club as a drinking companion. Despite drinking with actors like Richard Burton and Frank Sinatra, Bogart frequently found himself barred from pubs, bars, and clubs. His persistent love for drinking and smoking took a toll on his health in his later years. In 1956, he was diagnosed with cancer and passed away shortly thereafter. Even during his final days, he could still be seen holding a glass of sherry. William Claude Dukenfield, W.C. Fields, W.C. Fields, originally William Claude Dukenfield, was a celebrated actor and one of America's finest comedians. He was known for his impeccable timing, humorous grumpiness, distinctive nasal voice, congenial nature, and fondness for alcohol. He expertly blended his real-life persona with his on-screen characters. Fields achieved fame in his mid-50s, but his career in life almost ended prematurely just a few years later. His alcoholism reached extreme levels, with reports suggesting he consumed over two quarts of gin daily. This led to severe health issues, including delirium tremens. After struggling through films like Poppy in 1936 and The Big Broadcast in 1938, Paramount dropped him. His ongoing struggle with alcohol, Fields experienced a lengthy recovery period. During this time, he became a regular on the popular radio show, Chase and Sanborn Hour, in 1937. The show starred ventriloquist Edgar Bergen and his wooden sidekick, Charlie McCarthy. Fields' comedic banter with McCarthy became legendary on radio, 
and the relatively effortless work of radio broadcasting provided solace. This radio success helped maintain his status as a star while his health gradually improved, eventually allowing him to make a comeback in films. In the final 22 months of his life, Fields resided at the Las Encinas Sanatorium in Pasadena, California. On Christmas Day, 1946, a holiday he reportedly despised, he suffered a massive gastric hemorrhage and passed away at the age of 66. Peter O'Toole with an impressive eight Academy Award nominations and remarkable performances in critically acclaimed films such as Lawrence of Arabia, Peter O'Toole's on-screen record was impeccable. Yet, his personal life told a different tale. From early in his acting career, O'Toole developed a strong affinity for alcohol. His excessive drinking escapades in Beirut, Lebanon while filming Lawrence of Arabia became legendary. Reportedly, he was intoxicated throughout the entire production of the 1964 classic Beckett. On one occasion, he took a date to a play in Soho, only to realize he was the star of the show. O'Toole and his drinking companions were infamous for their frequent intoxication. He fondly recollected instances like having a beer in a Parisian pub and waking up in Corsica the next day. O'Toole even claimed to have learned about John F. Kennedy's assassination 22 years after it happened, a testament to his obliviousness due to inebriation. Eventually, experiencing abdominal pain and health warnings, O'Toole quit drinking. However, the damage had been inflicted. In his later years, his once striking appearance had visibly deteriorated. In 2013, he passed away in a London hospital, his health ravaged by years of heavy drinking and chain smoking. Bernard Lee, with a career spanning half a century and an impressive list of over 100 film and television appearances, Bernard Lee had an incredibly active career in the performing arts. He started his journey at the tender age of six, experimenting with stage productions before gaining widespread recognition in the film industry. Without a doubt, his most significant achievement was portraying the character M, the leader of the British Secret Service, in 11 James Bond films. However, Lee's personal life was overshadowed by tragedy. The devastating loss of his beloved wife in a house fire, a brutal mugging incident, and unresolved financial debts pushed him into a state of depression and alcohol dependency. His addiction was reportedly so severe that during breaks from filming the Edgar Wallace television series, he would be confined to his dressing room to prevent him from consuming alcohol. Despite these measures, Lee allegedly found a way to indulge his habit by hiring someone to pass a straw through the keyhole, allowing him to drink discreetly. In fact, even the renowned heavy drinker Richard Burton supposedly admitted that he couldn't match Lee's capacity for alcohol, as Lee once outdrunk him. At the age of 73, Lee succumbed to stomach cancer, most likely a result of his excessive alcohol intake. And so, our journey through a dark side of Hollywood's history concludes. The tales of these individuals remind us of the perils of fame and addiction. If you or someone you know is battling with addiction, remember that you are not alone. There is hope, support, and a path to recovery. That's it for today. Thank you for joining us. See you in the next video.